Welcome back to Talk of the Town on 99.7, 1450WHTC and WHTC.com. Welcome back to Talk of the Town for this Wednesday, May 18th. I'm Gary Stevens. Once a, month, once a month, we have a chance to catch up with some of the things going on in the office of Clerk and Register of Deeds in Ottawa County. Justin Roebuck on the other side of our Zoom connection this morning joins us. Good morning, Justin. Good morning. It's good to be here, Gary. Glad you are me. with us virtually. <laughs> and if you have a question for Justin, he'll be happy to answer it at 616-395-1450. 616-395-1450. We'll be talking a little bit about what he presented to the Ottawa County Board of Commissioners a week ago, the annual report, some of the highlights involving that. But I do want to get your thoughts, first of all, about not only the just completed election a week ago uh, yesterday, so it's eight days ago, but also getting things ready for the August 2nd primary. It's uh it has been a busy time and will be a busier time as uh, the next three months go along. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's really crunch time for us. We, uh, as you mentioned, we had the May 3 special election, which involved a lot of school districts, uh, millage votes, as well as uh, several municipalities also had uh, tax questions on the ballot. Uh, then we really rolled right in from the certification of that election to programming for the August 2 election. There's a pretty tight window there. We have to bet ballots on hand by June 17. Uh, so what we're doing now is programming for that election, uh, proofing those ballots. We'll be mailing candidates proofs of those ballots shortly just to make sure that everything is up and running and that our print deadlines are met for the August, uh, August election coming right up. What I, I want to touch upon, and that's why I sort of, uh, uh, was looking be, while you were talking and explaining a little bit of this was something that uh, the state attorney general mentioned yesterday in a briefing. She says there are four what is called nonpartisan legislative changes needed uh, ahead of this year's statewide elections. I'm not certain if you are aware of what she has been pushing. Uh, your thoughts on what might be pending before state lawmakers to try to, you know, in her mind, improve the elections. Yeah, yeah, and I assume maybe you're referring to, it was the Secretary Benson's uh, press conference that was, yes. Um, and, and I think, you know, we're definitely in agreement on a couple of those issues. We've uh, worked very diligently this year, the Association of County Clerks and Municipal Clerks, um, to advocate for a couple of changes that we feel would be really critical for this election cycle. The main one of, uh, of those challenges and changes would be the early processing of absentee ballots. So basically processing those ballots so that they are ready to release a total on election night after the polls close. Uh, and most states that have uh, absentee balloting laws the way that Michigan is written, uh, Florida, Ohio, um, uh, some of the larger absentee ballot states in our region uh, already do this. Basically, they process the ballots uh, in the days leading up to the election. So election workers are there. Um, it's a completely open and transparent process where they're going through the workflow issues, scanning those ballots in, ready for tabulation after the polls close. So that's the big thing. And you know, Secretary Benson mentioned, mentioned that yesterday. Uh, we have been uh, talking about that as local clerks and county clerks across the state of Michigan. Uh, we've had some pretty positive response from the legislative, um, you know, from our legislative partners on that as well. Senator Shirky mentioned uh, really early on after the 2020 election that this was really a needed reform for Michigan. Um, and it has Democratic support as well as Republican support. So we're really hoping that this can be a change that actually happens. Now, there is concern, and I don't know whether or not it's well-founded or not, that if you have pre-tabulations, it could lead to uh, possible leaks on who's leading in an election before the actual ballots, uh, the ballot box is open, the actual uh, election polls are open, yeah. and it could uh, taint the integrity of the election. 
Yeah, that's a great question. I appreciate you bringing that up, Gary, because I think, you know, that is probably the number one concern with this issue we've heard. For me, this is about accuracy and transparency. It's huge. When you think about election workers working, you know, a full day shift, 18, 19, 20 hours in our larger cities, they're working longer than that, processing your ballots. Um, I don't think that's an environment that lends itself to the greatest amount of accuracy because people are tired and people have worked a long day. And when you think about it, to be able to put things aside, to come back fresh uh, is a really big deal. And we can do that prior to election day. The transparency thing is, is important too because we have absentee counting boards should be open to observation. They need to be. Um, but how easy is it for us to get, you know, for a political party or for an interest group to get observers to go into an absentee counting room at three in the morning, you know, on a Wednesday following the election, we would much rather, you know, be able to say to people, hey, come at 10 a.m. on Monday and you can observe in open this process happening where people are fresh and they're looking at it with fresh eyes, both the observers and the election workers. And so I think there's, there's a lot to be said for the accuracy and transparency there. The other thing too is it's a felony right now to disclose any information obtained in an absentee county board, it's much like a jury process, uh, right? Where it's it's a felony to disclose information as a juror uh, that you hear, uh, you know, in in a, uh, a privacy, I guess, of the jury uh, deliberation process. So it's a very similar statute uh, to what we have with that. And I, I do think the other the other big thing with trust in our election process too is one thing that I am concerned about is that as we see these volume of absentee ballots coming in, you know, we've had an overwhelming number of absentees really since the law changed in 2018. People like to vote that way. We need to be able to be responsive with our laws to make sure that we're processing ballots in the way that people are choosing to vote. And I think it can undermine trust in our process when we don't know results until a couple of days after the election. I think it's important to have that, you know, that message there that we're on the ball and that we're able to produce results for an election and not give, you know, not give any credence to a conspiracy theory that might arise out of not having results. The other three uh, bills or other three uh, initiatives that was pointed out by Secretary of State Benson to strengthen the security of elections with consistent, sufficient funding to increase penalties for anyone who threatens, harasses or taxes Amer election workers and protect the voting rights of military service members and their spouses overseas by permitting them to return their ballots electronically. Uh, it seems those are, you know, to me, maybe some good common sense things uh, that probably will get OK, even though the electronic returning uh, is still is, is still a little iffy right now. Yeah, and that military electronic return. And that's another one that is pretty uh, nonpartisan in terms of the Republican and Democratic support in the legislature. Uh, a good friend of mine, Senator Tom Barrett, uh, who is uh, kind of led the charge on this last last year in the in the uh, Michigan Senate, um, basically, and and former Secretary of State Ruth Johnson also had uh, sponsored a bill. Basically, it allows military folks the use of specific secure military equipment um, to uh, access the the a portal to return their ballot, and so it's a little bit. Uh, I would say much more secure, I guess, on the military end um, than just simply sending an electronic ballot over the internet. Federal law allows us to mail a voter a ballot by email who is overseas or in the military, um, but they have to currently, they have to return it uh, if in, the, in, in paper form. And so that really has resulted in, you know, a number of military ballots, unfortunately, not counting in time for the election. Um, and we think that there's a secure way of doing that, particularly for those military voters to be able to use the U.S. Department of Defense system to return their ballots. Justin, eight days ago, you had a chance to present your annual report to the Ottawa County uh, Board of Commissioners, not only accomplishments, but also some of the numbers. Why don't you give us some of the highlights of what you reported to the commissioners? Yeah, sure. Now, this is obviously something we do annually to the board. Uh, but also to our residents. And there's a lot of information, a lot of things that happen in our office every year that we want folks to 
be aware of. Uh, a couple of the bigger things that we accomplished last year, uh, a major project moving our archived uh, court records, over 5,000 bankers boxes full of uh, documents, over a million documents moved uh, that basically reduced storage cost, but also was a, a way for us to condense records. We sent some of it to the state archives. We're saving significant dollars in storage fees, but then have a little bit better handle on all of our historic court records as well, which is a big deal. Uh, we started fingerprinting for CPLs. Uh, so that's uh, uh, certainly a customer service advantage. Folks can make, basically make our office a one-stop shop when they get their CPL, they apply for a concealed pistol license, and that helps uh, speed the process along as well. The other thing we did, and this is kind of crazy because we do so much electronically, but one of the things we were previously not able to do was when we get uh, uh, deed documents either sent to us by mail or recorded over the counter, we are required to return those documents after we record them and we were doing that by mail. Uh, so we actually signed on to a, a platform that would allow us to return those documents securely online. So this is not something they could just be emailed because they're, they're large file size and they're, um, you know, we need to do that in a secure way. Uh, but that platform allowed us to save over $10,000 in postage just last year. So that was kind of a cool thing. Uh, the other big thing for our elections division is that we uh, received a U.S. Election Assistance Commission Award uh, for Outstanding Innovation in Cybersecurity and Technology uh, in 2020. It was a national award basically that our elections team received for communicating on election security uh, we had over a million impressions in 2020 leading up to the presidential election on our Ottawa votes campaign. Uh, and that was pretty significant. Definitely, uh, you know, value the, the team uh, that put that together. So those are some of the main highlights from 2021. And some of the numbers are, you know, we, we last time you were with us, you gave us the baby names, which was kind of yes. nice because you have to log not only births and deaths. And we, you know, let's put it this way. The, ba the books balanced in that regard, didn't it? <laughs> First time I've ever seen, we had this exact same number of births and the exact same number of deaths uh, in our country. So 2,111 births, 2,111 deaths. So we did break even on that. Um, hopefully, uh, you know, and actually it, it, both the birth and the death rate are a little bit lower than the 2020. Uh, 2020 death rate was certainly impacted by uh, coronavirus. There's no doubt about that. We saw those numbers, uh, but the birth rate was also higher. Uh, so uh, a little bit lower on both ends and it happened to just even right out. Uh, by the way, uh, for those of us who are musically inclined, uh, you can cue the David uh, Clayton Thomas uh, 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 and When I Die song, One Child Born in This World to Carry On. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened in Ottawa County in 2021. All right. Uh, what about goals for 2022 this year for your office? Yeah, a couple of uh, really important things we're working on. Campaign finance online. Uh, this project is going to be rolling out this summer. Basically, we'll allow uh, folks to a uh, searchable database of all of our campaign finance records for any current uh, candidate or elected official. So you just be able to type in and search uh, the income and expenditures of those campaign committees, as well as ballot question committees, of course, or PACs. Um, and it also allow candidates to file online, which is more convenient for them, leads to better accuracy, and uh, gets the, the information up to our citizens more quickly. So that's a great thing. The other fun thing we're working on are kiosks. We actually have a beta project right now of kiosks for public services that are offered through the Vital Records Division or Register Deeds. So we're actually going to be able to do a video conference with folks standing at a kiosk and be able to see them or give them an oath or process documents for them. So that beta project is going on right now at our office at Fillmore. So if you're interested in, you know, helping us test that out, feel free to come on in. Uh, but ultimately, the goal, obviously, is to have these kiosks in places that are just easier to access for people around the county. So we're excited about that, too. Uh, we're also working on a new case management system, which is a big one. Uh, all of our circuit court records are managed through a process, not only our department, but obviously circuit court, the prosecutor's office, law enforcement, um, our friend of the court division all utilizes the same 
case management system. That system is old. So we are replacing that. We're hoping for that to be effective in this calendar year. Um, another big thing for us is team development. I'm big on developing our team. Um, you know, we have a, a great and amazing crew of folks working for us, 38 employees. And I, I tell our staff every day, I think it matters that we take the time in management and leadership to really work on ways to grow and develop our team personally and professionally. I think that'll help give us an edge in an environment where, you know, people are all looking for work and there's a lot of jobs out there and we want people to say, hey, we want to come work for the county clerk register of deeds. Justin, it's been a little while since we brought up the subject and sometimes when um, things are, shall we say, looked over or put uh, too far in the past, it comes back and rear its ugly head. And we're talking about in your role as the register of deeds, uh, uh, making sure that your property isn't going to be absconded by some uh, 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 bad guy or bad lady uh, that might want to usurp your deeds. And you said that there was a tool in your toolbox to help uh, uh, homeowners and property owners make sure that their title stays with them. Yeah, absolutely. It's a it's an easy, free tool that we have. It's called Property Fraud Alert. And basically what the system does is sends you a text or an email or an actual phone call from our office. If someone happens to record any um, property uh, information or uh, record anything with our office with your name on it or your parcel number that's attached to your property. On it. So it's an either or situation. Um, and you can sign up for that actually at miottawa.org slash ROD. Um, and that's uh, register deeds, obviously. So, I, you know, it's one of those things where our laws with regard to property are really old and they allow for someone to essentially record something in their name and, and commit fraud at a fairly... I would say, I don't want to say low bar. It's certainly a lot of penalties for it uh, if it happens and it gets caught. Um, but basically our office has to record something that meets the statutory recording requirements. Uh, we can't do an investigation and make sure that Gary really is Gary when he comes to the window and has to record something. One of the biggest uh, benefits of our electronic recording process is that it really has, has eliminated a lot of the the concern for this because we use verified providers like title companies and they obviously have a vested interest in making sure those documents are accurate um, you know before recording them and so you know electronic recording has really cut down on a lot of that because we have legal offices and title companies and you know institutions using that method and that's about 80 percent of our, our document recording now but it's always a good thing to check. I always say you wanna check your credit a few times a year. You also wanna check our online free search and make sure, just type in your name, make sure that your property records are still correct and accurate and that no one has nefariously gone in and tried to, to mess with that. It's super easy to do. You can do that online at miauto.org slash ROD as well. One final thing, and again, I want to circle back on something we talked about earlier this year that you brought up on our show, and it's gotten it got some mileage, uh, uh, some uh, phone scammers uh, saying uh, people need to pay up or, you know, they're going to be, you know, the, the, the sheriff is, is going to come in. You were mentioning the scam first to us. Uh, how have we gotten in terms of maybe uh, closing that little loophole down? Well, you know, I, the phone scammers with uh, register of deeds documents, you know, I don't know that that was our office. I want to say that, but was, was that happening in Allegan? Well, no, it was something that you were mentioning about uh, uh, people, not so much phone, but maybe a letter or something, the, the owner saying that uh, 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 the, uh, there was a, I don't, I don't have the story in front of me, Justin. I wish I did. I apologize. I yeah. I Cause I think I, I remember something you were mentioning about and I don't have, you know, yeah. we only got about a minute left in the segment, but, uh, I, I, and you mentioned it on the air with us. I think it was back in January or February. Okay. Well, about, I'll look into that. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, you yeah. said, uh, you what you're working with the uh, sheriff's department on this. 
Uh, in fact, it was one of the last things that Mark Bennett was working on with you guys before he retired. Uh, so we'll, we'll save that for, yeah, for, for next month. I apologize. Month. That's all right. I'll, 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 I'll look for the story. And I'll probably say after the top of the hour, oh, man, why didn't I have that <laughs> ready to go? But that's, hey, that's something we can talk about. What I can ask you about, or shall I say, give you a chance to mention in about a half a minute or so, volunteers. Hey, clerk's office needs some help, especially as we got the August 2nd primary coming up. Absolutely. We can always use election workers and actually miottawa.org slash election workers. Uh, that's a way to find out how, how you can get plugged in. You can, you can volunteer in your neighborhood, at your precinct. Uh, we definitely have a need for that. Uh, and it's certainly uh, great to see people responding to that as well. So uh, it's a way to serve. You obviously get paid for the day that you do serve, um, but it's an important way to see the front lines of the democratic process and be involved in that. So we definitely encourage folks to do that. He is Ottawa County Clerk and Register of Deeds, Justin Roebuck. As always, Justin, thank you very much for the time and hope to be able to chat with you over the table next month. And we'll talk to you then. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Gary. Good to be here. Thank you very much, Justin Roebuck on 99.7 and 1450 WHTC.